As we get here into the game, it is January 23rd, and we are going to see some very high ELO solo queue on the blue team, the uh, the USA, if you will. We can see Huebar right there in the mid on Orianna. Beast like that will be jungling on Vi, and in their bottom lane, it will be uh, T-Law on Thresh with Hogu Birds playing AD carry Ezreal and isolated up in that top lane, fighting the 1v1. Chicken Addict 1 will be playing Renekton. Now, one thing I do find interesting here is we're seeing Pantheon go to top lane with a Doran's Blade. Okay. Now, that is, A, it's aggressive, but B, it's going to be really interesting to see how he manages his mana. Because usually when you see Pantheon go into a solo lane, it's with a flask. He does tend to be a very mana-hungry champion. He's an AD caster. He's not going to get a whole bunch out of just his regular kit to sustain him as far as his mana goes so I'll, i will be very interested to see how he does against renekton who's a no mana champion who all he needs is health regen right it's definitely uh something you know he can win out that war of attrition uh having you know the health regeneration and no mana like you just said uh but Raiden 7 is going to have a, a really solid spot going here into the early to mid game where he can not only potentially look for a kill on Renekton who won't be too tanky early on, but uh, he can also roam to other lanes and uh, maybe look, you know, once he gets to Grand Skyfall to drop in on the mid lane against an Orianna who, unless he has her flash, doesn't have a way to escape. Yeah, uh, if he can get a good one onto Orianna, that could be a very good gank for him, especially since when you man drop, you can actually designate your stun before you hit the ground. So he could get the stun off before Orianna can even set up the ball to uh, get Shockwave off. Right. So, Ooh, you know, with he... Zed coming up here to the top lane, Chicken Addict could be in a rough spot. Let's see if Raiden7 can get the stun. He's going to jump on there, but Zed doesn't quite follow it up. Chicken Addict doesn't see him, though. He jumps in there and he gets a good amount of damage, but not quite enough to finish it off. Yeah, that was just... That was just solo Q. Yeah. Had they both committed, I think there was a kill there, but uh, a little bit of miscommunication will let uh, Chicken Addict. Ooh. Uh, I, I like the name. Yeah, I like the name as well, but I don't like the situation he's in right there. He has to flash away immediately. The flash comes in from Raiden 7, but uh, he can't quite follow up there. I think he auto-attacked a minion and realized he wasn't quite close enough to the stun. Yeah, and that actually got Raiden's flash there. Uh, that would have been nice if he could have saved it. Because that's going to be a big, big summoner down. And now that Vi knows that Raiden does not have flash, I would expect a healthy dose of Vi coming up. Yeah, I, I agree. Not with Chicken Addict on this low health, though, because at this point, if Chicken Addict comes out from under that turret, Raiden can turn on it, or he can just do that with the Spear Shot and the Ignite. He gets the first blood. He does fall to Vi immediately after flashing in and using that Vault Breaker, but still, the first blood did go over here to the red team. Yeah, I don't... I mean, we can, we can say all day what we think about it, but Chicken Addict stayed with some very low health there. And pretty much right, and once he knew he had his full combo ready to go, he went Ooh, Killifast moving in in the mid lane, but Huebar not taking too much damage there, turning a little bit on to Killicast, and uh, nothing today, so you can continue on. Yeah, um, so maybe a little bit suspect uh, with Chicken Attic staying that low, but it might have also been a bait there, uh, because Beasts Like That did not move very far from that top lane. He did not try and get around there. He stayed right next to the turret, so I think they were expecting Raiden to come under a turret, and I think they were hoping that Chicken Attic maybe could escape uh, a little bit easier than he did. So, I can't tell if it was calculated or not, but it will be a one-for-one. One. Right, right. They did get the assist gold, but uh, the gold yeah. is actually going to be in the advantage on the red team. Overall, when you look at the lanes, they're all just a little bit ahead in farm. And uh, an interesting pick here is that Raiden7, in my interview with him yesterday, uh, said that he doesn't like the tank meta because his favorite tops uh, don't fit into it. He likes this, uh, you know, he, he actually mentioned Pantheon by name. Oh, Sonode Fenny trying to go in there on the Huebear, throwing in the Javelin. Huebear can't dodge that one, but Beast like that comes up from behind with the Vault Breaker, is able to get in there for the knockup. Sonode Fenny tries to heal himself and turn it around a bit. He pops the barrier, not shielding up much damage, trying to jump away from here and is actually going to escape to the bush. Yeah, nice little aid there by the passive. Just ducked into the bush, got that extra 
move speed, and he's able to run away. And I, very lucky for him that Beast Like That was not level 6, uh, is now Definitely. level 6. Oh, I wasn't sure if he wanted to go in on the Killicast, who has a bit of damage right now. Killicast is actually going to go in pretty aggressively. Beast like that might want to turn it around with all these minions, though. Look at the damage from that Vault Breaker in the excessive force. He doesn't have the mana for the Assault and Battery, though. The Flash comes in from Killicast. He misses the Shuriken. He's going to fall to the minions here. Beast like that takes the kill. Oh, man. Well, you know what? Uh, Killicast, I think Froggen feels you today. Uh, for those of you that don't know, in uh, Alliance's game today, a, I think they did get their first win today. They did. They so, did. <laughs> congrats to Alliance, but it did see uh, Froggen die to Big Wolf in a team fight, which of course. Oh, was, that's amazing. Yeah, of every caster is just sitting there going, "Oh my." Oh my! Oh my! Sinead, if any, and Waybear trying to trade back and forth. Sinead, if any, has that javelin. Waybear's in a pretty rough spot, but he's not going to get struck by that today. Oh, he flashes over the wall, tries to get it. This is a pretty interesting duel between the two of them. Sinead, if going to go in there, and the command shockwave doesn't actually go off in time. He was able to get the assassinate in just enough time. You know, that was a little bit of a Mexican standoff there. Both <laughs> of them knew they were low. Both of them knew they could die. And it was just going to see who had the quicker draw there. And luckily for Sonata Fanny, that was him. So, uh, that was he. Uh, oh, Grammar side bot lane. Oh, wow. Moon Young fell low and backs off. They don't want to show us any, uh, any deal of action today. But with Vi coming in here, that could change. She has the Assault and Battery. Yami goes in pretty aggressively. It's going to end up in a 1 versus 3. Flay comes back. Yami tries to flash away. The Ignite is down. Beast like that trying to save the Assault and Battery. And with a Death Sentence coming out from T-Law, that'll certainly be a dead... Oh, he almost turns it around on the Hogu Birds there. But the minions don't quite finish the job. Yeah, I think he was saving the, uh, the Spell Shield there for an Assault and Battery. But it just never came out. And yeah, he did not... He did not spell oh, Nidalee yeah. coming up here to the top lane, lands a Javelin, and that's going to put Chicken Attic in a rough spot. He pops the Dominus, but he uh, actually does fall, but right in seven in return will uh, go down to that turret. Took a bit too much damage there from the Ignite and the turret shots. It's also going to allow Blue Team to go for the Dragon here, taking it up for the first one of the game. So we've seen a lot of plays here very early in this <laughs> game, which have led it to a almost dead even gold count. Uh, but Raiden 7, he is going very aggressive <laughs> oh, on his yeah. Pantheon right now. He's got the Brutalizer, and it seems like he really just wants to bully Renekton before Renekton finishes his Ravenous Hydra. So I'm going to be very interested to see whether he keeps up this very offensive build path or whether he starts to get a little bit more health to help these turret dives because that is the second time he's died this game going aggressive under turret. Yeah, I... When you trade one for one on an early aggressive champ, you might be able to say it's worth it because it helps you get to those items a little bit quicker. It gives your enemies items as well, but uh, I think Raiden 7 is gambling that he can do more with, you know, a Brutalizer than uh, Renekton can do here with, you know, a piece of his Tiamat. Yeah, well, he's got the big piece of the Tiamat, though. He's got that pickaxe that is actually the heaviest weighted single ingredient in the build. So True. with that, it's all just building small pieces now. Right, but with this match, oh, so if any gets caught up there by the dual power of the assault and battery and the command shockwave, excessive force there to uh, take out the kill, and that is Vi showing her strength as a jungler. Yeah, that was uh, that was a unique combo. I actually did not like the timing of it because it was assault and battery with a direct shockwave on it. I think if they had spaced it out... Oh, Deathmark goes in there. Hoybar from Killicast. And actually, he's not going to get it quite that. Finally gets to the auto attack, but he's going to follow the turret here. He couldn't get it fast enough. And uh, opts for the one for one. That is the third time this game we've seen someone die to get their kill. Yeah. It's, is... it's bronze all over again. But it's Challenger. But it's worth. It's worth. <laughs> it's so worth. Uh, yeah, getting back to my point, uh, the Assault and Battery and the Shockwave are used at the same time, which is actually a waste of CC duration there. Oh, here comes Bottom. Oh, with Yami caught up there by Beast like that, he is not going to be long for this world. Going back to base, 
in a casket. And Moon Young, not sure he can defend up this turret for very long. He doesn't have his tippers available. And uh, he could be in a rough spot. He does have Sanete Fanny coming in from the side. But Beast Like That turns onto him. Look at the damage from that Vi. Sanete Fanny having to pounce away from that one. But he has Hue Bear coming in from the side to cut him off. Beast Like That trying to stick on here. Gets it with the Vault Breaker and takes him out one versus one. Yeah, that's that Brutalizer right there just doing work. Uh, the Vault Breaker, especially when you put points into it early, is very good burst damage. And I don't think Sonata Fanny was really expecting it to be that significant. So tried to fight it out early, then realized, I don't want this fight. <laughs> yeah, I think he might have missed a pounce over the wall too, and he's just like, yeah. oh no. Oh no. Well, let's see if Moondung and Yami are a little bit more respectful of this Vault Breaker. But these like that, looking for the hands to come in. He has his assault and battery. There's a fight going down. Hogenbirds gets burst down quickly. But Beast Like That is coming over the wall. Moon Young was able to claim out the kill onto Ezreal. And Yami is retreating off the side. Beast Like That can't quite continue on. And that will be a uh, 1 for 0 for the red team. Uh, actually, it'll be a 2 for 0. And right. Biden was able to pick up Chicken Addict in the top lane. But here's Under the lane. turret. Oh, Killicast coming in from behind. Sanade Fanny gets the javelin. Beast like that is so low. And Killicast going to look for the Shuriken there. He actually goes in with the death mark to make sure he claims it. But with the command shockwave, Killicast going to fall low. But doesn't take any turret shots. So Sanade Fanny get it, got in there to tank it up. Killicast now waiting here for Hue Bear. In case he were to run through, he had the ward there, but uh, was finally taken down. I can't believe Red Team was able to get so much out of that, though. Yeah, the, that was a very aggressive play by Killicast there. Going in to get a kill on Beast like that, despite the fact that you have two really very utility champions that were sitting right around him that had the ability to kind of stop him underneath that turret, still gets out. Gets the kill, so all around good play there for Red Team. That'll actually give us our first significant gold advantage of the game. Oh, Raiden. Raiden jumps right in there onto Hue Bear using that Grand Skyfall. Hue Bear has to be careful, but Raiden just can't follow it up. Oh, so Nede Fanny almost dying to the blue buff as well. He uh, almost pulled a Broken Shard there. You know what? He probably had heal, just didn't see a reason to use it. Yeah, I guess oh. so. Beast like that catching out Raiden 7, and he's going to fall quickly. That burst damage from the Vault Breaker is enormous. Raiden just uh, not quite spotting out Beast like that in time. Oh, top lane. Chicken Attic went really hard on the Zed there, but Zed is just going to shadow out. Uh, Renekton has finished his Tiamat, so that is uh, a lot more burst damage that's actually going to come out from him now. Which is, uh, it's one of the unique things that Tiamat allows. It A, makes him a great split pusher, and B, it just gives him this, especially if he gets the three hits done, uh, charged up Fury on that W, on top of of the burst that's going to come. Oh, out the, out. on the hunt comes out from Yami. Antonetta Fanny is there from the back. Try to get him out. The sun hasn't come out yet. T-Law going to throw down the box to slow him up. Hogo Bird's still alive. Sanete Fanny taking the turret shots. To, almost goes down, but throws up the heal in time. Takes out Hogo Birds with a javelin. And Yami escal escapes on the back with low health. Now in the top lane. Beast like that going to look to go in. Right in seven. Trying to defend up his turret. It's going to get caught out here. And with the huge damage from the Vault and the excessive force. He almost turns on the chicken attic. The ignite is ticking down. But it doesn't quite finish him off. Oh. And Sonata Fanny picks up Thresh in the bot lane. So what we're seeing here is there is no way for either <laughs> of these teams to really jump out and take an advantage right now. They're definitely giving us an action-packed game with Nidalee coming in here in the mid to Hue Bear. He dodges out of the Javelin and uh, won't see a kill in every lane. Just the top and the bottom here. Killicast yeah. is coming out with a lot of damage as the jungler. He's building a Last Whisper now, it looks like. Yeah, that will probably be the next item out for him. Uh, but one thing I feel that is needed to point out right now... Oh, Command oh. Shockwave on the Killicast. He's able to dodge out some of that with the Death Mark, but he gets taken out in time. And with the Assault and Battery coming out on the side of the Fanny and the Red Buff slow, he might not be long for this world either. The Pounce is so powerful, though, to get him away, and beasts like that won't be able to return on. It looked like it looked like beasts like that was was freezing up every once in a while, just stopping moving. Yeah, uh, sometimes that happens when you when you've clicked on a champion that you're trying to follow or auto attack, and you suddenly just lose vision of them. Oh, that could be it. it it'll freeze up the champion every <laughs> once in a while, so uh, probably just happened for that uh, attack but, move. 
one thing we need to take a look at is there is a very nice kill spread here for the red team. We have four, two, three, one. You have eight, <laughs> eight kills, kills on, on buy. Right now. That's ridiculous right now. But he's going to be able to use them pretty well, staying in the middle of the fight there on pretty low health, but claiming up the first kill on the Yami. The Grand Scuffle comes in from right and seven, and he can't find anyone. He's just awkwardly running around in the middle of that dragon pit, and everyone from blue team escapes off the side there. That is the second ineffective Skyfall I've seen from him in a row. Uh, the first one, he tried to get on Oriana when he had a ward. Uh, it's, it's roughly in the same place it is now. Uh, right at their entrance to the lower jungle near Dragon. And he tried to spot that and aim for the gap in between the turret. And he was just late there. And he was just late getting there to that Dragon fight. And here comes Chicken Addict. Right, he goes on the right in 7. Right in 7 stays in time to take out the turret. There's no command shockwave from Oriana yet. But he's going to try and speed up Chicken Addict. Kill cast and if any are around the wall. And Raiden will run directly to them. The Javelin comes out. Chicken Addict continuing on his spree. There is the stun coming out. Right in 7 jumps right back in with the Heartseeker Strike. The command shockwave comes out and it misses everyone. But Chicken Addict still manages to grab the kill up. Now Kill cast is caught in a bad spot. He's able to switch back to his clone. Beast like that tries to come over the wall. The shadow could be enough to save Killacast here. Bist like that is fast with his boots of mobility though. And with the auto attack, he will claim Killacast. Red buff, a little too strong. Way better take out a kill on Sinede Fanny as well up in the top river. Well, <laughs> that was that was actually fantastic. Uh, <laughs> this was, game is crazy. Yeah, Killacast was trying to be maybe a little a, a little too cool for school there. And uh Tried to juke him out, but you can't run away from the uh, the long, well, the huge fist of the law, I guess as it would be. Yeah. And, uh, boy, beast like that. I wish I could be a beast like that. 9-1-3 uh, and three right now has Cleaver and Elder Lizard. So that is that is peak buy damage right oh, now. Oh, Moon Young in the bottom lane with the huge summon Tibbers. Hogu has to jump out of there. T Law now looking to hold them up here, actually, as Hogu Bird tries to attack from the side. Beast like that coming in is able to finish off Sivir. Moon Young looking to retreat off the side. Won't be able to find much respite there in the turret. Hogu Birds takes out the kill there, and Beast like that is everywhere exactly when he needs to be. Yeah, he is just reading the aggression here from the red team and every time they try and get aggressive every time they just try and step out that little extra step he has been there with a vault breaker to the face and it has just been so effective and here's chicken addict on right this is all turning into the slot fight that we see so frequently now that chicken addict has some armor and health Raiden can't quite do the damage to him, but because he is specced into so much defense here, he can't return exactly the same. Uh, Raiden 7's shield helping out there as well. Oh, beast like that in with the assault and battery. Almost takes out Killacast. He escapes off the side, though. So, if any tries to turn around, the shift back in from Zed claims the kill, but falls. Hogobirds flashes over the javelin from Senefani, and Hogobirds wants to continue on here. He has the true shot barrage up in a few seconds, and he's most likely going to look for the snipe here. Let's see in this bush. There it is with the snipe. It's going to find Sinead Fanny, but the heal was a little bit too much. Hugo Birds Arcane shifting over the wall. Tries to finish off the kill. Going to take the lantern out. The flash over from Moon Young. Not quite there. Hugh Bear missing the second command shockwave in a row. Moon Young now looking to keep Hugh Bear Hue Bear there. He does fall down, but Yami flashes in, is able to find one kill with Moon Young taking out the second. And that could finally be the end of this aggression with T Law retreating off the back. Everybody is looking for more kills this game. Everybody just wants that one extra kill. And they keep on dying for it. Uh, I think a little bit of patience and restraint here could go a long way for both teams. And Killacast not even going to attempt to deal with Chicken Addict. Yeah, he knew he knew that Renekton was at the red, but he thought he didn't realize he had drawn him into the bush, and so he tried to just shift in there. He realized he missed him with the shadow and that he couldn't duel him out without that shadow to uh, dash around. And Yami falls once again, but because it was beasts like that, it's almost unsurprising. With 11 kills on the board, <laughs> Vi is just uh, really proving to be a menace. We talked about it last game, how, you know, sometimes you like to go for that Spirit of the Ancient Golem so you can survive after a fight. But one way to avoid that is just by killing everyone so fast they can't possibly damage you, which is exactly what beasts like that is doing here with the Assault and Battery. Sonata Fanny looking for T-Law, but not quite finding him. 
Once again, there was not really a great reason for Nidalee to think she could get in there and get that kill. And paid for it. Uh, that is an... Oh, oh. Kill a cat, finding something at the top. The stun goes into the chicken attic, and he's taking a lot of damage. The death mark finally pops. He tries to flash in on the kill a cast. Kill a cast jukes him around, but still falls to the turret damage. Ride in seven now could be caught by Hue Bear. Let's see if he can finally land this third time. Might be the charm for the command shockwave. Ride in seven just uh, throwing around. Oh, there's a command shockwave there. Ride in seven tries to jump back around, but with the command protect, Hue Bear is able to stay alive. And the bot. Oh, yummy. Yummy. Oh, yummy. I, I don't even know if you need me this game. It's just been a constant stream of action. Yeah. This game. That is kill 39 at the 21 minute Holy point. cow. No, I, I need someone to talk in between the action so I can save my voice because there's been just so much. Yeah, but... you know, I could almost like practice ventriloquism right now. Just sit here, drink some water, have a dummy go off on the side. But yeah, it's uh, it's been one heck of a game here. So let's take a look at some of the items that have been bought. Uh, we do have the Last Whisper is already out for Raiden. He is taking a 30 CS lead in his lane, and it is four kills to four kills. But that Renekton is just going to outscale him late game. It's it's not really a question. It's just a matter of when. And. Oh, we do have a Hydra finished on Zed. He did not okay. go Whisper like we were thinking. That so does that help his burst damage with the Death Mark, as well as give him some pretty good wave clear if he goes off to Split Push. But I, I think I think it's mostly going to be for, uh, you know, jumping in there. If he throws on Death Mark and the Hydra proc, it can uh, come out with a good amount of burst, not as much as the Blade of the Rune King. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, with Blade of the Rune King, you sacrifice a lot of AoE damage that the Ravenous Hydra would give you. Yeah. And else looking around, we have a finished Trinity for us for Ezreal. We, oh, this poor Sivir. Yami is, uh, it has not been a great series of games for Yami. Uh, her Vi not last quite. game was nowhere near, uh, the Vi level of this game. And 0, 06 and 5 on Sivir right now. Not really feeling too strong. Does have a finished Bloodthirster. But Ezreal has just finished his last whisper, so not really going to be the uh, big team fighter right now. If it's any consolation, his support does have a needlessly large rod, which if uh, I uh, can trust my judgment, I think he's going to go for Deathfire Grass. The mid inner turret falling here going to be the uh, sixth turret falling of the game, which is, seems like a pretty small number going in here uh, almost 24 minutes in. Yeah, you know, the way Moon Young has actually initiated a lot of these fights, I think he thought he had... Grand them. Skyfall! Oh, but the huge command shockwave on the Sunday Fanny and Moon Young, beast like that, tries to come in. The first kill goes on the Way Bear, though, and this is an insane fight. That is Raiden 7 falling down to T-Law, but two kills going down for the red team. Yami is trying to continue on, has on the hunt popped, but Sunday Fanny falling low in his pursuit, going to have to fall back behind his lines. Red team finally won a fight. Yeah, and boy, what a fight slash cluster <laughs> yeah. skirmish uh, that was. Uh, all we really know is that two people died on blue and one person died on red. That That's as much as I could almost... Yeah, describe. people use their abilities. Some people auto-attacked more effectively than others. Yeah. Uh, insight... <laughs> So what we, oh, oh Sinete Fanny got caught out there by the death, death sentence, but he survives on the very end. Chicken out it can't quite finish him off. T-Law going down low, but the command protect is there from Waybear, and no one falls there playing tricks on me. Chicken Attic does DC, which might be the uh, the break that Red Team is looking for. Yeah, they're all like, quick, quick, before he finds his chicken and push, gets back off. Push, please. He, he's actually just leaving for a chicken hit. Uh, I think. Okay, yeah. I, I know his. Ah, uh, he's uh, right back. We we call him the Colonel. He has this uh, really shady mustache. Only wears uh, white for some weird reason. I see the joke you're making there. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, the true shop barrage stopped the recall from Sonetta Fanny. The big plays coming out here from Hogo Birds. So, other <laughs> things we learned from the uh, big fight is we actually had Raiden Seven come in on the man drop. But he got CC'd before he was able to get off his stun. 
he took a lot of damage before he was even able to stun someone up. So effectively, he got three people uh, partial bits of the damage, but he really didn't have his full effectiveness of getting that Heartseeker strike over a good number of the uh, enemy team, which is one of the benefits of Pantheon is you're getting that armor shred, especially with the Black Cleaver, you're almost getting this double layered armor shred over a good portion of the team. So without that, uh, it was surprising that they were able to win two for one, but then again, Raiden 7 took a lot of damage, uh, took a lot of the focus falling straight into the enemy team. Right, and Yami was finally able to survive out of that one. He has a good amount of damage here. Um, that comboed in with the uh, AoE damage come from Moon Oh, Beast Like That gonna get caught out there! On the hunt comes out from Sivir and Raiden 7 claims the kill. Beast Like That could be getting a little overconfident. We've definitely uh, applauded him up to this point, but with that, he's actually going to be opening up the Baron opportunity here for the red team. Right, so red team I don't think knows at this point that Chicken Addict is gone. But the blue team does, and you should not right. be pushing that far, A, without wards, and B, without a fifth team member. And uh, they they saw they saw T-Law, they saw Huey Bear in the bottom lane, so they yeah. knew that even if Chicken Active was there, it would just be a single Renekton in there. And boy, that was actually a very close true shot barrage, <laughs> uh, but a good smite there by Killacast. I'm assuming he used smite, did he? Yes, yes, good boy. <laughs> um... So a good smite there will take the Baron. So a good quick Baron there, and the fact that the Crocodile is currently sidelined by whatever may plague him uh, has really helped the red team surge back into this game. Yeah, definitely. They've made up their gold uh, disadvantage by about uh, you know, bringing it up to 2,500, which at this point, you know, it, it's a solid item, but... Uh, that won't matter quite as much as will the positioning and the plays here. The gold is uh, so even that I think it's really just going to have to look... Or we're, it's just going to be evaluated by where people get caught out. If it's Vi getting caught out in a you know 4v1 like that again, then Red Team definitely has a chance to win this out. But if Vi can continue on that rampage that she was on before, just continuing to catch people left and right with the Assault and Battery, I think they still uh, are, are in the running here and in a bit of a lead. Yeah, poor Killicast there thought he had lined it up. It's like, okay, I have a beast like that. It's just me and him. I got <laughs> this, right? And then he's like, oh, wait, you have a Warden's Mail, a Giant's Belt, and a Spirit Visage. Yeah. I'm just going to go walk this way. Yeah, he he's pretty tanky at this point, which which he needs to be able to survive in that fight. Yeah. Uh, he Like we talked about, he did opt for those rather aggressive items. Beast like that going to try and stop this dragon that Moon Young is taking with the help of Tibbers. Killicast going to come around the side. Beast like that is not able to smite it away. It is Killicast that gets it, but Beast like that could at least retreat with the help of that lantern. Yeah, so it was it was a great idea to steal... Uh, obviously, hey, it's 50-50 smite. Uh, did not win that, but luckily he's got a Thresh on his team. Thresh can really help you get out of sticky situations, especially when you're trying to steal things like Baron or Dragon. So, nice for them. That's actually going to pull them dead even in the gold department. They're only trailing by one turret. So, at this point, no one really has a <laughs> true advantage. That's... That's definitely the case. I'm not sure they know that they're dead even in gold, though, because I feel like to this red team, they have to feel like they're still a little on edge. They can see they're behind in kills, and they know how strong Beast Like That is. However, taking him down a couple times in a row might give them the surge of confidence they need. They uh, are, are sitting on this Baron buff for a while. I'd like to see them make a play before it wears off, or else it was just, you know, a decent amount of golden experience to the team, but not much more than that. Right, and we're definitely going to see Killicast in the split pusher role here. He does not have teleport to get around, and this is truthfully where I'd like to see Raiden 7 more than Killicast as a split pusher, seeing as he can man drop in. But, th heck, they could even just do uh, a 1-3-1 one, one kind of format here. Yeah. With Annie and Nidalee, well, Annie for the disengage, Sivir for the runaway, and then Nidalee to just punish anyone that dares follow. Right, I'd like it if they went for it. They, they've kind of backed off a little bit, I guess, to, to gather... I don't know, Killicast really needed the the wraiths. But uh, 
I think red team finally realizes their blue, their baron buff is almost up. They have to make a play now, and this is why when they're finally grouping, now you're seeing red in seven up in the top lane. He's going to be able to man drop in and possibly catch out chicken addict before. This could be the big fight here. This could be an inhibitor for the red team or a total failure. Yeah, and this is there's a lot of poke here. I they want to land a spear before anything starts up. But oh, beast. beast like that going to go right in. He's waits for the spell shield and goes right in on the Yami. But Yami is able to fire him off to the side. Turns around. The man drop comes in. Killicast finds a kill on the Huey Bear, And there's the kill on the beast like that. Yami is able to find his revenge. The flash in for Zenifeni is going to find the javelin there on the T-Law. Chicken Addict probably won't be long for this world. He tries to turn around in the Moon Young, but the heal from Sinedafani keeps him alive there. Double kill for Sinedafani with some well-placed javelins. And Red Team, with a full ace, are going to be able to continue on. Killicast... Wait, who did Killicast 1v1 someone? Uh, was he bought him this entire time? <laughs> let's see. Who was not in the... No, I think Killicast... He just, he just ran straight bottom after winning the fight. Although yeah. this could be the game going down here. Actually, they're taking on Nexus Shorts quickly. They had Timbers there to uh, to tank for a bit. Yami has a lot of damage on these turrets, and so does Raiden 7. This is going to be the game here for the red team. Unless Beast Like That can mount the most amazing defense. Not nope. quite. Nope. 